Hey guys, every single time I buy a house, most of the time I bring in a private money lender to come in with a down payment, furnishing, renovation to the house, and the holding costs along the way until I get my house until I get the house up and ready. And every single time you bring in a private money lender, you need to make sure that you are securing them on a on, against the real estate. And you don't want to just borrow money just for the sake of borrowing money. So I brought out my transaction coordinator who handles all my paperwork. And in this video, I want to highlight how to actually safely secure your private money lender. And I have the paperwork ready that I want to show you to you guys. And I have my transaction coordinator who'll be going over the paperwork so that every single time you want to buy a house with zero money out of your own pocket, that you know how to do it. So hi, love. Hi. How so, are you? Yeah. I'm doing great. So you're uh, doing really great because you just paid off some PMLs. I did just pay off a PML. It was only 30,000. I have PMLs at 50,000 and those are, I don't, I don't want to pay them off just yet because that's a higher amount. But it was a small amount, so I just decided to pay her off. But um, you're the Can you one imagine if, if you were to tell yourself two years ago that, hey, I only borrowed $30,000 from a PML, like, would you believe yourself? If you're, is, if you're casually talking about, you know, just the, the ability for you to, to be able to protect people and, and to be able to borrow money for real estate, like, it's so cool. Yeah, a matter of fact, I actually, uh, I actually uh, flew in a couple of my private money lenders yesterday or oh, this week. Uh, Wednesday and Fr Wednesday and Thursday, and they stayed at my Airbnb. We I showed I took them to the project that they lent me their money on. It was great, and now I just pay them off. So things are going along. How so? I guess most people that that come into real estate, right? They hear about private money, um, but they don't know the logistics. They don't know the paperwork, and then also the same token for private money lenders, right? They some a lot of people who have money maybe from their w2 or from like family inheritance or from wherever right they they come into real estate and like i can really deploy my capital to be able to um you know move the needle forward with acquiring assets and they also don't know how to protect themselves right so yeah. i guess this video is is gonna um answer questions for both parties if you're someone borrowing money how do you provide transparency to your private money lenders? How do you feel, have them feel protected? And then for your private money lenders too, right? I think uh, a, a good frame to go into this video is um, how do you ask the right questions, you know, when someone's asking you to borrow money, right? And how yeah. are you in the loop um, throughout the transaction so you know what's going on? Because a lot of people go into it they're lending money, but they also want to learn, right? They right. they go into it because they want to learn along the way. So um, I, I see, you know, sometimes if, if people aren't doing it properly, like um, the PMLs are out of the loop. The PMLs don't know what's going on with with the, the, the transactions they lent on. A lot of, sometimes the PMLs aren't protected with a deed of trust. And so this video hopefully is able to provide clarification and, and, show everyone exactly what you need to be able to make all parties feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah. And in this video, I, I am actually pulling up my documentations that I used. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, love prepared the paperwork for me. So I know it's a it's a legitimate paperwork. How many how many times have you dropped up notes and deed of trust? Like hundreds of times? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um a lot. A lot yeah. of times. And now it's even to another level because um, we have an escrow specialist, right? Who is really, really, I used to be the ones on my team to draft those documents and I was only, you know, bandwidth, right? But now she does this in her sleep. She can do it in like literally, you know, 15 minutes um, if need be. So, um, and we have all of the tools and software to also record um, in-house. So we don't have to go through the hassle of, of paying uh, a title company, you know, a, a big chunk of money just to be able to do what we can do for a fraction of the price. So um, do, how do you want to start this? Do you want to reverse engineer of like the documents of that? Or do you want to start from the beginning? And and Let, let's, start from the, let's start from the beginning. So I have a house here on 3753 East Polk Street. This is a house I bought sub to. Obviously, you know that you know the address because you handle the pipe, you you handle the paperwork. I bought this house about uh like I'll say like mid last year in 2023. And we I just used my own money for it. Right. But then I'm like, okay, well, I wanna I I kind of want to pull my money out. So I brought in a so um I brought in a private money lender um for thirty thousand dollars and I pulled all my money out that I put in because I essentially like refinanced my money out. And then, yeah. and I'm like, okay, okay. Oh, with, from all the cash flow that my partner and I were, were getting from our, you know, from our portfolio of real estate, we're like, mm -hmm. let's just pay her off. It's $30,000. You know, we're making $300 a month, monthly payment on this. So mm -hmm. I decided to pay her off from my own cash flow. 
And this and this is where um, so now we have the, ex the existing note and deed of trust that is secured against the house. And now I'm bringing the funds in to wipe her out. So I want to show you the paperwork that I that you I love you prepared. And honestly, you will, you're gonna have to help me guide this because I'm not I don't know the paperwork too much. I just kind of sign whatever you tell me to sign. Um, yeah. yeah. So um, let's see. So that is the release. So that's what um, he signed recently to release that deed of trust, right? So um, if we're going to start from the beginning, we need that other one, the note and deed of trust that he initially signed. It's a note and deed of trust, and it's for the term of 24 months at 12% interest, right? And as you can see up top on the upper left-hand corner, you see the amount, right? Like Kevin mentioned, it's $30,000. Right. And so um, typically how it goes in... in how this plays into the, the transaction and, and the escrow process. Um, this, the note and deed of trust doesn't typically get drafted and recorded until the end of the transaction, right? When it's reaching, um, you know, when everyone's signing uh, closing documents. So as everyone knows, you open escrow, right? Kevin was under contract with um, the seller. And, um, you know, upon, you he closed on it. Um, but he then brought in the, the private money lender for um, 24 months, but you paid her off way, way before that. I paid um, her off in so, three months. In three months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this note, if you guys, a, a note doesn't hold um, any value um, with the county, right? The promissory note is just the terms all laid out. And you always need a deed of trust supporting the note. The note by itself, it won't mean anything um truly if you take it to court right um so, so the so the note it just highlights okay i'm borrowing thirty thousand dollars here for yep. 24 months at 12 percent yep. interest rate. my monthly payment is 300 and basically yep. my first payment last payment and no without no prepayment penalty so i don't like yep. if, I pay, if i pay off my lender earlier i don't have any penalty to pay and exactly. and obviously i signed as uh as the authorized Oh, uh, as the uh, operating manager of the LLC. So this yeah. is, this holds no value. This holds no power in court, you say? No, it's essentially an IOU, right? So yeah. without the deed of trust, no, you need that deed of trust. And that's the instrument that let's say, you know, Kevin gets abducted by aliens, right? His PML can go in and, and, and foreclose on him with that deed of trust, right? And the note is in support of that because it then breaks down the payments, the structure, the no you know prepayment penalty and all of that good stuff. This deed of trust is just a general instrument that everyone who has access to uh, the internet will be able to pull this up, okay? Yeah, so, 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 so for that this, purpose, this is so this is like basically the deed of trust is like mortgage, right? So like you got the first mortgage, right? Yeah. Like I got an M&T bank with this mortgage. And the second yeah. need would be uh, my lender, PML. Yep. Okay. So, um, and if you're, depending on which state you're in, like if you're in Michigan, they refer to it as a mortgage in Pennsylvania and in most East coast states, it is referred to as mortgage, but um, in, in the West coast and in a lot of states, it's referred to as deed of trust. It's interchangeable, right? It's the same thing. Um, but you're also able to like Kevin in this instance, right? He has that first existing, um, lien that's, um, that the seller, that the borrower, uh, borrowed from the lender. Right. And that's what he's saying. Right. It's the first lien on the property. And then, so the private money lender who's coming in, who's going to lend money on it, they're going to come in as second position. So right. let's say, um, again, right. Kevin gets abducted by aliens and the private money lender, um, wants to go and, and foreclose, right? They have to go in order. The, the first person who has to get paid out if the private money lender forecloses is going to be that first underlying um, mortgage, right? It's that first underlying lender. And then, you know, the private money lender is going to be in second. I don't know if I should tell that because that doesn't actually help your case in terms of like, uh having the pmls like want to lend i don't know if they know that but oh, it's all my no i'm i'm there's i have i have nothing to hide okay, I, okay. My, all my private money lenders know exactly what i'm doing so they okay. know the second position in some houses they're, they're not even fully secured on but then i do some i do some personal guarantees on some of them so okay. uh, my lenders okay. are fully, fully protected it does it does say grantor is in uh sorry grantor is indebted to get a grantee in principle sum of thirty thousand dollars and in lawful money in the United States of the United States, basically saying like thirty thousand dollars is the second lien position. 
Yep. And then, uh, and this and and deed of trust is what gets recorded, what gets notarized, yeah. and gets recorded on in at the county level. Yep. Yep. Right. So then anyone can um act. So if you're a private money lender, right? You want to be able to read through your documents before you wire in your funds. Okay. That's so important. And that's why even if you're a private money lender, you should bring in a TC in the deal so they can protect your interest in, in, in that transaction. And they can ensure that you're in the loop with what's going on. You're in the loop with, um, signing the note and deed of trust and making sure that the terms are what you agreed upon. And then after that, making sure they got recorded, making sure that you have access and you can go and, and, and verify as well. Because I know I've heard horror stories of private money lenders not being in the loop at all. And they'll sign the note and deed of trust. But for whatever reason, I don't know what happened. It didn't get um, recorded. Right. And so what does that do for them? That doesn't guarantee them anything, you know, and if anything happens, they're going to be out of that money. So um, it's really, really important that you guys protect yourselves. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, I'm just playing around with this real quick. Um, You can't, you can't see. I don't know how to make this bigger, to be honest with you. I think it's, oh, there we go. Oh, there you go. Okay. So the, so the most important thing when you're, when you're lending out private money, when you're lending out to private money is, um, is, a, is a note and deed of trust. And, yep. and 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 I'm just gonna highlight this. I'm just gonna you know recap this as we as we already said it. So first thing is is, is a note and deed of trust. Let's, gonna... let's actually work backwards. So the note and deed of trust that's what you need to finalize the deal. But even if you're if someone sends you a deal and you want to lend on it, there are a few things that you want to verify. Right? You want to look over um, for private money lenders. Look over the contracts. Look okay. over the contracts that the the wholesaler um, signed because there are times as well where there is a balloon that the lender doesn't know about that there is, um, you know, they're taking on an additional lien. There's just so many things where it's in the contracts and um, you're lending money on and you don't know, right? And it can affect you and impact, you know, your money. Um, so look over the contract, verify that the title commitment is clear, right? You want to make sure that what you're lending on is is a good asset, right? Okay. Right? And um. This goes without saying, but even, you know, before looking over the contracts, you want to underwrite the deal, right? You want to make sure that this is within your buy box. You need to know what your buy box is, right? I'm I'm trying to think in the mind frame of someone who's new in the real estate realm and they want to lend money, right? And they don't know where to start, right? right. So you need to be able to identify your buy box. You need to identify what you're lending on. Do you want... Do you want to start off with midterm rentals? Do you want to start off with short-term rentals? Do you want to start off with long-term rentals, right? Like, what do you want to lend on? Have your your, your investing box. Um, I, like, and, I, I want to cut you off real quick because this yeah. is so crucial. Like most of my lenders, I'm, I'm looking at the demographics of my lenders, that people that actually give me money. I'll say there's, I have about $800,000 mm -hmm. of private money loans. Oops. Yeah. You know, these, these are across multiple, multiple projects. And I would say 80% of them, W-2 employees. And then the other other 20%, you know, they're self-employed and whatnot. And you, you know what it is, is most of my lenders don't really know how the paperwork go, go, works, right? So they, so they rely on people like me to make sure that like I'm doing the goodwill that I'm, you know, that I'm, you know, that whatever I tell them to sign, that it is a it is the right paperwork, but if if you're yeah. if you're not lending me the money, and if if you're lending money to someone that you don't know, and how do you verify that this person is is making me sign paperwork that's legit? You you have you have a you have to have a TC ver you know like read read through all those documents and make and make sure make sure like hey 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 um Miss Mrs Mrs Smith, I know you're lending thirty thousand dollars to John Smith. Did you know that there's a seven year balloon? Are you aware of that? Did you know that there's no prepayment penalty? Did you know that there's a set you, you might be. Did you know that you're in second lien position? Did you know that there's um you know or sometimes oh, even third lien position, right? Uh, like sometimes even third lien position, <laughs> yeah. right? Because because when you do a hybrid, you you you're in third lien, right? You got the first lien, sub two, yeah. second seller finance, and third. And most yeah. of most of the lenders don't know that. No. Which is so crucial to have a transaction coordinator walk you through the paperwork and say, you know what? Am I if I'm if I'm if I'm spending fifty thousand dollars, you know, and I'm just giving a number for my for my example, like my average. PML, I, I bring on fifty thousand dollars, and you're wiring somebody fifty thousand dollars, and you don't even know what position what what position you're in. Like you you need to like this is this is where you want to spend a little bit of money to actually hire a transaction coordinator to making sure 
there's there's no balloon. You got you're in second position, not third position. And how what what do you get a deed in lieu or like whatever? Yeah, it is. yeah. So as a transaction coordinator, you you provide all of those. All of these, yeah. We we take it very seriously. So um, and again, right? That we cater towards who's coming to us, right? So if um you, like the client is a wholesaler who's um wholesaling the deal right? Like we'll protect the the private money lender, but um, there's a different level of in-depth care. If you're, you as a private money lender is coming to us specifically and saying, Hey, please dissect this deal, right? Like there's a difference in that if, if that's the only thing we're focused on. So um, I just want to distinguish that, but you should know, you should ask questions. You should make sure that you're in the email threads as well right. as a private money lender. That's very important. Make sure that you're added to the the um, title email thread, and um, before you know you wire the funds, just please, please double and triple check the the note and deed of trust. Okay. I I can't say how many times, and this is like I'm not even in the business of lending money, right? Like I, but just because of the people knowing know that I do a lot of deals, people will come to me, you know, saying, "Hey, like I just lent somebody money, they're not paying me back. How do I?" get my money back. Yeah. And I'm like, did you look at the paperwork? And I'm like, yeah, I just, I just signed what they told me to sign. And I'm like, no, you need to have, you need to have somebody like, I, I get it. You know, you don't need to have a full on attorney. You know, you don't yeah. need to have a full on attorney to like underwrite the deal for you, but you want to make sure you at least hire a transaction coordinator to look over at the least. paperwork so that they are, they are working for you and they're yeah. kind of protecting your money at the same time too. Yeah. And it, you know, it is a, a, a fee up front, but that's worth it for such a big amount of, you know, $50,000. It's it's so worth it. And to have that protected because you can only imagine the horror stories that we hear and we come across. So yeah, oh, please protect yourselves. At least, for, I don't know about you, but at least twice a day, twice a week, bare minimum, twice a week. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's my, my, my story is not like, my story is not for them to say, hey, can you, um, can I, can you help me with, uh, can you help me out with this deal? It's, for me, it's like, hey, like I lend my, I gave money to somebody else, and I and I don't, they're not paying me back. Do you want to come and buy this deal and cash me out? Like that's like how it, how it is. Oh really? Everybody oh, wants no. me to buy buy them out of the deal. It's like I don't want this deal. Like I have my own deal flow. Is it is it mostly in Arizona or something? Or like they uh, know you're buying? Yeah, I mean, so, most of them are in Arizona, but like sometimes, like I got a deal in New Mexico. Um, this guy named Scott was like, hey, like I gave this person money and they're not paying me back you want to just buy the deal outright from me and you pay me out or like they're like i'll i'll seller finance you the money that i lost i'm like i don't want seller finance no oh but, my goodness but it, we laugh about it now but like there, it, oh. it's happening all, all the time and i think everybody needs to at least secure their uh, interest in the deal by having somebody look over the paper whether it's a tc or whether it's an attorney or whether it's a friend yeah, whether it's a yeah. Friend. anyone anyone but again just don't wire anything unless you're you make sure that everything looks correct and is aligned with what you signed up for right so let's go back to let's go back to you know what we were talking about because we deviated a little bit so number one look at the yep. contract making sure like you know that, that you know you're getting the money back in a certain time that you that you said and then mm -hmm. there are no and and that title commitment is clean there's no there no additional liens and encumbrances what do you what would you, what, what would you say step number three is Hey guys, real quick, I am going live every single week in my school community to help answer everybody's questions because number one, I can't get to every single one of them in a timely manner. So click the link down in the description box below and I will personally help answer your questions. Make sure that who you're lending the money towards, right? The wholesaler is like someone who has credibility, right? Do your due diligence with um, the person that you're in, in contact with, right? right? Like that's so important, right. so important. Right. And for you, Kevin, what would be those like what what are things you do, right, to make your um PMLs feel comfortable? Like maybe this is a part where you can add stuff, you know, like what are ways that you, you know, verify your credibility? Um, number one, I cross collateralize across other properties, right? Because like let's just say this house that I have, it's got eighty percent equity. Sorry, eighty percent leverage. So I got twenty percent equity in this deal. And um, so I, I might put a lien against this house, second lien, but then I might, I might go use that money to buy something else. Right. So I, the, so the money that I use doesn't necessarily have to be, um, the 
or collateralize against the house that I'm borrowing the money from, right? Like sometimes I'll borrow money for one, two, three Main Street because that that's that's uh, that house has equity, and then I take that money and put it into something else. Uh, I, but but I cross collateralize um, every every third lien position that I do. I I do personal guarantees, so like sometimes a hybrid deal, like sub two, first position, sell uh, seller finance, second position, and then the PML will come in and and third position uh, mm -hmm. as a PML. I'll do I'll do some personal guarantees. Um, I love that. And so these are things, you know, private money lenders that you can ask for, you can request, right? If you're going to be in third position, you can make sure or you can ask and negotiate with with the person who is borrowing that money to um, personally guarantee you, right? Uh -huh. So these are things that you can ask and um, don't be afraid to negotiate either. I feel like a lot of people who go into it, like PMLs, they're like, I have to follow everything that this person is saying. Like, I have to do what they're saying, but no, it's it's your money and you have to protect it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, additional ways for you to protect your interest is like paying points up front, right? I, I, I've I never paid points up front, but like two two points, you know, yeah. that, that, that's, 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 that's an option. But, um, but going back to the okay, paperwork. Yeah, verify credibility, yep. And then it's um, just make sure that the no and deed of trust um, look proper and are aligned with what you signed up for before you wire the funds. I have to say this, make sure the deed of trust is recorded. Yes, that's the fifth. Yep. Make sure, ensure yeah. that it's recorded. Yep. Because I've, I've seen cases where the borrower will sign the deed of trust, notarize it. Hey, here's a, here's a, here's a, here's a, uh, we got it all, all notarized right here. Here's a notary stamp. And guess what? They never record this anywhere. If you don't, if it's, if it doesn't get recorded, then it, then it, it loses its whole value of it. Pointless. Yeah. There's no, there's it's no point for it. Yeah. Right. Um, and make sure, and make sure you get the, um, recorded confirmation, right? What do you call yeah. confirmation? Like, uh, do you get a confirmation code? It's or? just, um, no. So up there, if you go up, um, that's how, you know, it's recorded all the way on the, um, upper, huh? Oh, this is, so it should say recorded. Like there should be a stamp or even if it's, um, recorded okay. online, it, it should be on the upper right hand corner. Okay. I might, I might have, I might have gone the, uh, pre-recorded one. But yeah. I mean, this lender's already paid off, so she's yeah. she's good. Uh, yeah. But you usually what you was I I know I know exactly what you what you're talking about, love. Um, usually you want to you have this like little stamp, you, like little box right here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Circle here, Maricopa County. Yep. Uh, yeah. Like a stamp. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then just also um that, but like follow up with the county. You know, you have access. Um, go go online and and search it, and you can see if it's been recorded. Yeah, it takes about here in Maricopa County. I I I say it re, it gets recorded pretty quickly. Like you, yeah, you it's get a public record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, faster than um counties we've seen. Yeah, there are some counties that take like three weeks. Yeah, so follow up with the county, making make sure when you pull up the document number that you can see that that it, that that the deed of trust is recorded. And so what we do with our processes as well is um, at the end of a transaction, we have like a, like a outro call where it's us calling, um, whether it's the PML or the client who's wholesaling the deal, and we're going over um, the transaction. We're seeing, hey, how can we improve? You know, what did you like? Would you use this again? And then we give them the, um, the drive with all of their documents, right? So it's going to be all of the transaction documents is going to be all of the recorded documents. Um, and you can use that to also verify. And we, we always add the recorded deed, the recorded, um, anything, anything recorded goes in that drive. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. Every single time I do a transaction, I get a full on email at the end. It's like, like, what is it? Like eight, nine paragraphs. And I get all the paperwork, the, you know, paperwork to the Google drive. Yeah. Um, I never open it up, but you know it's there. <laughs> yeah, like love, love you, you, you definitely go above and beyond. Like I mean, most transaction coordinators they don't do that. You know, like they you just have to manually do it. But like you have Monday.com and you you use other softwares where everything's organized. Like just for us to go find, just just for us to go back and find this paperwork, it was like it was literally a breeze because it was you just go to Monday.com and it's already there, right? It's all there. So yep. Um, we but, love it. We love Monday, and we love Google. Google is amazing. Yeah. Well, there we have it, guys. So 
I, this this video is more catered towards the people that wa that wants to give money to a borrower. One thing, let's go over. So, can you show the release? Did you show the release as well? I think we were we, we showed it in the beginning, but like once that you have all of that, right? Like for the the note and deed of trust, and then now we're at a point where Kevin paid off this person, and th this is the document that's needed in order to release. Yeah. Um, this initial deed of um, trust, and this also has to get recorded. Okay, so um, that's what it looks like. So, I, so I, I have officially paid off my lender. Oh, cool. You've officially paid off your lender. Yep, congrats. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Um, that, is that is that it? Um, yeah, yeah. And you, you so typically what it looks like is um, if you're opening escrow to pay off a lender, um, you have to get a payoff. Um, the escrow company will help with that. And then, you know, once you get the payoff, um, you know, you also sign the, the the deed of release and it's pretty simple, but you know, you don't have to go through a title company. If you have a TC that can just do it all in house. <laughs> um, all right, guys. So, so like I said, this video was more, more made for the people that wants to give money to a borrower, but at the same time for the people that are borrowing money that you want to safely and successfully secure your lender into a, uh, into a, into a lien position, right? And if you don't have, and guys, like I said, I don't any I don't open any of the documents. I have love to like ninety nine percent of the stuff, and I I don't. She was like, "Do you have access to Slack?" And I'm like, "I don't even think I have Slack on my computer, right? I had this computer for four months. I've never even had this. I never even downloaded Slack. That's how little involved I am because they do they do they, because love has such a good system. But guys, it's much better for you to hire a transaction coordinator or hire an attorney to look over the paperwork, then you coming back and say, Hey, I, I lost 50 grand. I can only recoup. 25. Kevin does not want to hear you guys coming to him saying, Hey, buy me out of this deal. Okay. I do not want to buy, you, want to out buy of you out of the deal. Don't ask him. Okay. I, I will not buy you out of your deal because of your stupid mistakes. And you were like, <laughs> I want to spend, I want to save, you know, a little bit of money here. So I'm going to wire my money. I'm going to wire 50 grand. And I don't even know what I'm signing. Guys, like that is just stupid. Okay. It's crazy. So, don't do that, guys. Don't do that. Please don't right. do that. <laughs> like my lenders, what my requirement for my lenders. So so this is so love. I don't think I told you this. My requirement, if you ever if I ever bring in a new private money lender, is they have to talk to my existing lenders. Right. I will not let them wire me any money. Oh, well, look at this. That's cool. Cause you did a thumbs up. That's cool. <laughs> Number one, I would not let any I would not let any of my lenders wire me any money without them talking to my existing private money lenders and asking them, hey, was Kevin ever late on his private money lending payment? What was your experience like? Is it beyond what you got, beyond what you expected? And if any of them says no, I, mm -hmm. I don't recommend any, I don't recommend you uh lending to Kevin. I tell my I tell them do not let me money. And number two is they have to use intentional TC or they have to they have to use some sort of transaction coordination cause um uh soft company. Them. Yeah. Whether because it's I, us, whether they want to bring in their own person, yeah. Because I'm not gonna do the paperwork for you. Okay, let's be honest. So <laughs> I'm I'm hiring somebody else to do it. Um if you wanna like and, and I've I've lent I got um and personally for me, I've gotten money using other transaction coordinations or other coordinators outside of love because my my lender was like, I this is my cousin. I want him to get you know acquainted with the paperwork i'm like that's fine but you know i i use intentional tc i use love love handles like literally every single one of my paperwork and she knows how to do it the correct way so um before we end the video love do you have anything else no that's all that's good that's really good um please protect yourselves okay and um reach out to a tc or, or someone that's well versed um in in the paperwork to make sure that you're not getting F in the end. Perfect. All right, guys, there you guys have it. I hope you guys make lots of money, lending money, lending, lending out your money to people and make lots of money, leveraging private money. And love, thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your day to go over the paperwork with me because I have no clue what, what it says. So thank you. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, guys, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.